Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back to my page, Money Making Juggernaut, where I discuss multiple streams of income. Today, we have a great video in store. I'm going to discuss all the issues that you'll face in the asset recovery business. But before we get into that, please go ahead and subscribe, hit like. I'm trying to come out with content weekly to give you guys tips and tricks on how to build multiple streams of income. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get right into it. So the first issue that you'll face in asset recovery and first of all, if you don't know what asset recovery is, I'll go over it briefly, but also please check out the videos on my page. I've broken down millions and millions and millions of times on exactly what tax overages are, excess funds, surplus funds, whatever you want to call it, and then also what unclaimed state funds are. So in this industry, you will face rebuttals, okay? So you'll get a client on the line, a potential client, a lead, you'll get them on the line, and they just won't really believe you um, I'll actually make a video this week. I'm not going to discuss it on this video because I want to kind of run through all the issues that you'll face, but I'll make a video this week and I'll go over every single rebuttal that you'll potentially face when you have these clients on the phone. So these rebuttals most of the time are going to be, well, how do I know this is legit? How do I know this isn't a scam? How am I even owed this money? How'd you get my information? Is this legal? Okay. There's many rebuttals. And I'll go over that in this next video, guys, so make sure you stay tuned for that, and I will help you guys get over those rebuttals, okay? I've been in this industry for a long time. I know everything that you're going to end up facing on the phone, so please be aware on that video. Next is providing a legitimacy, okay? So in this business, there's going to be people you know, who are asking, you know, how do I know this is legit? And there's many ways that you can do it. Some people who teach this, they teach most of their students, you know, don't give away too much information because then they can go do it on themselves. In all honesty, guys, I always get every lead. I give them, you know, exactly what I see, okay? So I send them over county documents. I'll send them over a highlighted list if their name is on a county's list. If I've made a list myself, I'll prepare some information to send over because the truth is, guys, all of these people essentially can do it on their own, but will they actually do it on their own? You know, if you're starting in this business, you're watching these videos, you can go out and do the research on your own and try to, you know, figure this out. But in all honesty, if you don't really have the means and know what paperwork and exactly what to do, then you won't do it. And that's how these people are. Not only do they not know that they're owed this money, but they really don't know how to file for it. And in some counties, it can be um, difficult especially for a beginner and if the county doesn't just outlay all of their steps to actually recover these funds. So you have to be able to provide a legitimacy. You need to have your website together. Okay, if you have testimony, that's perfect. You wanna send over county documents. Um, you definitely want to ensure the client that you know this is not a scam. You're not asking for any money up front. You're not asking for their social, anything like that. So make sure you guys are fully transparent and you can send over to them exactly what you're looking at. So next is unable to locate leads. So guys, look, in this business, especially if you don't know, you know, the ins and outs, how to locate leads, how to create your own leads, how to contact county officials to get leads, then you'll kind of be struggling. Okay, that, that might be an issue, not being able to locate leads. There are services that you can pay for to find leads. You can find leads on county's auction calendars. You can contact the county's office directly. You can do an audit on the county's website, perform your research. So there's many ways to locate these leads. If you guys want to learn exactly how I find my leads and how I teach my students leads, make sure you guys check out the course. Use code STIMULUS for $100 off of the course. It comes with a full mentor package and I'll get you guys right, okay? And also, if you're not able to properly skip trace them, so you'll be able to find this lead list, you'll find out who the owner is, you'll do your due diligence by searching the person up, either on the tax assessor or property appraiser site to confirm that that is the previous owner. Now you go to skip trace them and you can't find them. So this usually comes from an invalid skip tracing site, so maybe you're using a service where you can't find them, or you just didn't search long and hard enough. So guys, before I completely give up on a lead, 
I have to run it through all of my skip tracing sites. I have to run it through Google. I have to run it through Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, LinkedIn, anywhere you can potentially find this person. You want to search through every single avenue and channel possible. The only time that I honestly give up is if I can't find them through that or if they live in like some country like India or China and, and I just know it's going to be so difficult to do, you know, be able to find them. I just give that up. So you have to be able to properly do the research before you actually give it up and say, oh man, this was too hard. I can't find them. Make sure you go through all the channels possible. Make sure you do all the research possible before you give up on that lead. Okay. The next one is not being able to get a hold of these leads. So you found them, you might have found a list that shows their phone numbers, email addresses, social medias, mailing addresses. Maybe you've um, called every number on there that day and none answered. What I would recommend is reach out to them on social media, but also send out letters, guys. It's always good to send out letters. You can send a letter out to all of the addresses that they have on file. Maybe they might see this letter, they might open it, you know, you want to put in there, call me back for a free consultation, you might have funds that are due to you, and then you can go over things with them and then help them out. But also, what you want to do is follow up. So if you go through all these phone numbers and they don't answer, I always recommend go through each number three times. You have to call three times, leave voicemails, leave text messages, and when you leave these text messages, you can't say immediately, Hey, this is blah, 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 with this, this, and that. You're owed this amount of money. You're the previous owner, blah, blah, blah. They're not going to respond to you. All you have to do is say, hey, is this, boom, their first name. So if you were going after me, you would say, hey, is this Eric? If I see that, you're either going to get, no, it's not. Yes, it is. Or who's asking? Okay, because if it's that actual person that said, hey, this is, you know, if I got a text and I don't know who it was and they said, hey, this is Eric. I'm not just not gonna reply. I wanna be like, who is this trying to contact me? So there's different tricks that you guys can use. Once they actually say yes, now you can go in, you can either communicate to them via text or you give them a call, leave a voicemail, you know, things of that nature, okay? The next one is unable to get proper documents to help the deceased. So there might be situations, guys, where the deceased individual has passed away and you've gotten a hold of their heirs, the beneficiaries to this money, okay? The family members who are entitled to these funds. You've located them, but they do not have a probate, a will, a summary of administration, or an affidavit of heirship, and you can't locate any kind of documents to help you out on this claim. If that is the case, you want to then seek if it makes sense for you to get the documents for them. So maybe you might have to pay an attorney to get a will, trust, probate, summary of administration properly done so that you can get this deal done. But like I said, it has to make sense. So if you're going after a claim and you're getting 20 to 30%, you have to factor in that additional attorney fee into that 25 to 30% in order for it to make sense. If it makes sense, go after it. If it doesn't make sense, then potentially you can't do it, but I always recommend still going after it and then contact the, con the county to see if there's any way possible that they can accept this claim, you know, with what you have. If you have proof of documentation that this was, you know, the previous owner's um, heirs, maybe you can come up with something for the county. You know, don't just completely give up on it, but there are other avenues that you can go through. So next would be unable to locate a list properly. So maybe you might be researching these leads list and you can't find them for whatever reason. You know, I can perform a Google search and find over 60 counties right now, just based off of this Google search, which is in the course. You should never have an issue locating any leads list, but this can be an issue for a beginner, somebody who doesn't know what they're doing, but the lead lists are out there. Like I said, the counties, post these lists, you have the auction calendars, you can contact them, figure out when these actual auctions are occurring, how can you get the results, then you need to determine the overbid excess amount, they have paid services out there, finding lists should never be an issue guys, never be an issue. And then lastly is going to be getting a client to sign. So this is probably the number one issue that a lot of people will have. Well, they'll have somebody who's engaged, 
They've sent over the documents, but now they're just not signing. And what I say to this is you must follow up. You must figure out exactly what's going on. Is there a barrier of trust that hasn't been passed yet? Because they might still think it's kind of a scam. They may not be comfortable with it. What I always recommend guys is hopping on a phone call with the county, with the client in a three-way call and call and confirm that they're actually owed these funds. Some of you guys who are skeptical and just have that mindset of being negative will be like, well, once they figure out that they're owed this money, won't they just turn around and do it on their own? Go ahead and get that agreement form before you do this three-way call. Even if you haven't, it's always good to do a call with them. They're gonna feel trusted. As long as you've built a good relationship with that client, they'll still do the deal with you. You know, you presented to them an opportunity of funds that they didn't even know about. You showed them proof, legitimacy. You've got on the phone with the county. They've confirmed that they're actually owed this money. Now they might be feeling good. Now, now they might be like, okay, you know, this is true. Wow, this is crazy. I'm actually owed this money. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. You guys can handle all the paperwork, you know, no upfront fees. I'm fine with that. I'm completely fine with that. I actually had a client last week that we did that, you know, he was like, oh, I don't want to take, you know, so much of your time, blah, blah, blah. I'm just like, look, sir, you know, this is what we're in business and we do this day in, day out. A simple phone call with the county to confirm that you actually owe these funds. And he was like, you know what? Since you guys don't charge anything up front and I'm getting paid, you guys are getting paid on the back end. Yeah, let's just go ahead and do that. And he's completely fine with it. So in this business, guys, you will face issues. The good thing is I face these issues. I can help you out. In my course, I provide full mentorship. So make sure you guys look into that. Use the code STIMULUS for $100 off. And then also if you've used somebody else's course or maybe you've jumped in this business on your own and you're just looking for somebody to partner with and assist with, you can be a part of that program too. Make sure you watch my video, how the partnership works, and then we can move forward, guys. Thank you so much for watching the video. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe and hit the like button. Thank you.